So, we're in Summer Fruit, part four, and we're talking about patience. We're talking about patience today. And the um, dictionary definition of patience is this. It will come up on a wee slide. Uh, it says it's the capacity to accept or tolerate delay problems or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. Whoa, what a quality to have patience. And um, when you try and think about what patience looks like, I think in it, some ways it's easier to spot what impatience looks like, isn't it? I mean, I was, I was um, first Monday morning driving into Glasgow uh, for a long time, for years, and I thought, wow, you know, within, I think I was just going past Hamilton, and already there was somebody flashing their lights behind me to get past there. I was, I was doing, I mean, I was doing the speed limit, maybe just, just you know, that 71, 72-ish. Um, and, and, but somebody was flashing behind to get, to get past, and I thought, whoa, that's the... Uh, well, well Jenny, Jenny's always very gracious to these people when the boys are in the car. She says, oh, maybe, maybe they're just bursting for the toilet, you know, or maybe, maybe they've left the oven on, or, or their wife's having a baby, that kind of thing. We're trying to be gracious about it, but there's definitely some signs of impatience. And I think our culture... Um, I'm not saying it's become more impatient, but the way, the way that our culture is... I suppose it's changed over the last 50 years or so, maybe slightly longer. You know, even just the concept of something that we're very used to. Fast food, isn't it? You know, you can get fast food, you can sit and drive through McDonald's. And even if the queue's a bit long, you're starting to get frustrated if it's any more than like four minutes. Bearing in mind they're cooking you a full meal in that time. You know, they're actually cooking you a full meal. But we're, we're, we're used to that. We're used to just getting stuff what we want. We can Google stuff. You know, that's amazing, isn't it? You've got your phone, and if you don't know the answer to something, or somebody asks you something, or if you don't know the name of a song, tap, 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 that's you, you've got the answer. You know, you don't need to go to the shelves and get the encyclopedias down and start leafing through them and trying to find the answer to stuff. And I think that's what we're like, and we've got into that way, I think, where we're tuned now to looking for a quick fix. You know, you get all your, your ads on, on social media now about how to get abs in five days and stuff like that. Um, and you know how to lose weight. And there's there's always a sort of get rich quick, how to do something, how to shortcut something without the effort. You know we've got used to not having to wait, haven't we? We don't like having to wait anymore. And so I think it's a good. This part of the series is really good to remind ourselves that that the the quality of patience uh, is a good thing. You know it's a, it's a very good thing, and it has to be because you know by very nature of the fact it's one of the fruit. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's a God quality. Um, and I think patience is, is deeper than we think, and hopefully we'll, we'll cover that as we go on. By the end of it, hopefully, hopefully by the end of this, if you're patient with me, we'll have uh, understood a bit more about it. And we'll, I think we'll, I, I, w- I would love if we left, and me too, with a desire just to be what it means to be patient and to have a desire to think, yeah, that is a quality that I want to have in my life. So we're going to kick off, we're going to look at a couple of verses, our sort of series verse, and then we're going to jump to another verse in the book of Ephesians. So we'll start with the, our passage in Galatians, uh, which says, but the, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And then we jump to one, another one of the letters in the New Testament, Ephesians, where it says this. Paul is writing, he says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Two cracking verses, parts of the Bible there to look at that both, in, both have the word patience in them. And, and sometimes it's good to sort of dig a bit deeper in the Bible, look at what the word means underneath it. And, and I thought that was important with patience. And the word that's underlying in the Bible is a Greek word, that is called something like macrothumia, right? Okay, don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, in older translations of the Bible, like the King James, it was, it was transfer, uh, translated long-suffering 
right, which is quite a heavy duty word, isn't it? Long suffering. It's not a word we, we use much these days. You know, uh, well, I don't think we do unless there's some long suffering wives in here, maybe. Maybe that's a good application of that word. But long suffering isn't really a word. But it, it get, that word long suffering gets a wee bit to the heart of what the word means because it's, it's made up of two words. The word that we understand as patience is made up of two words. And the first word um, means means far away. It's like thinking of something that is far away. And, and the second word is about fury, anger, frustration. So in a sort of a way, this word that means patience is suggesting that our anger is a long way off. Okay, so if you think of your anger, you know, short temper is, you know, your anger is right there, just ready, ready just for somebody to do something to trigger you off. But this word that means patience is the suggestion that your anger it's a long way away. You know, it's, it's, it's a distance away. You're going to have to travel some to get to it. And there's also built into that word, there's a sense of a sort of conscious holding back that actually when we're being patient, we are, we're delaying an action. We're delaying something that we, we might do sooner. We're choosing to delay it. It's like a, a conscious decision to, to exercise control over something that, and, and to stop ourselves doing that thing uh, sooner than we would. So this morning we're going to look at three things about patience and hopefully, hopefully that'll help you. You all, you all on board for that? Yeah. Good, good, because we've locked the doors and you can't get out. So, okay, our first point is this. Patience is learned from the master. Okay, patience is learned from the master. It's in God's very nature to be patient, isn't it? Uh, you know, it's one of the, fr- the fruit of the spirit that we're reading about essentially are telling us aspects of what God is like it's revealing aspects of of who he is um, the bible describes god elsewhere and we were praying about it in the the prayer meeting this morning uh, as slow to anger and uh, filled with unfailing love you know god is slow to anger patience is part of who god is and i don't know about you but i'm very very glad that god is a patient god are you are you glad about that i mean it's one of the qualities of god i'm most glad that you know when i'm when i'm uh, replaying the day at the end of the day or or just looking back on my own life and the decisions I've made and the sort of curves I've taken and I think my goodness I'm so glad I'm so glad that God is a patient God and and we see that patience of God laid out throughout the pages of the Bible if you if you open your Bible the next time you're reading through the Bible and if you've got that word patience in your mind you really, really start to see it, you know, right through from, you know, all the decisions, all the things that that humankind have done, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah's time with the ark and the flood, Um, you've got the people of Israel who who have to wander in the desert for 40 years and then they get into the promised land and then they forget about God again and God's chasing them about. There's patience and patience and patience pouring out the pages of the Bible. And, And you sometimes look at these people in the Bible and think, what were they on? And then you kind of, well, I do, I turn that around to myself and think, well, I'm probably exactly the same as that. If I'd have been in that position, I would probably have done exactly the same thing as those people. So patience is part of God's nature. It's, it's, you see through the, the Bible, this sort of father heart of God, um, at every turn, at every turn, he's urging people to take, take this path, do this thing, you know, this is going to be best for you. And he's constantly reeling against human beings that are, think that they know best. We're all, well, we go and do this thing, God, because we think that's the best thing to do. And, and we see that patience as well, even just, even in the incarnation of Jesus. You know, it's God's timing in that. The Bible says this in a different part. I don't have this on the slide, but it says just at the, just at the right time where we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Just at the right time. You know, with God, He's never too early. He's never too late. It's always just at the right time. And when we look at Jesus' life, we look at his plan, we can see patience. You know, Jesus was early 30s, I think, when he started his ministry. You know, there was no, he didn't rush in. We see the pace of Jesus. We see the, the speed of Jesus. He accomplished so much in a short space of time, but yet he never seemed to be in a hurry. You know, we see how he invested his time in relationships with his disciples. Uh, and, and we see even just his interactions with them. You know, God, uh, when we look at it, God is a very embodiment, embodiment of what it means to be patient. And once you notice that, once you read through the, the scriptures, you will start to see it everywhere. 
And the interesting thing about God's patience when we read about it is that we see it is, it is intentional. You know, it is a choice on God's part to be patient. We see that word long-suffering is a very good description of what God is like because, you know, God has been bearing with us. God is the God who has intentionally suffered on our behalf. Now, I, I mean that obviously through you know, through what happened with Jesus, through his death on the cross, but in so many other ways, we see that God has been suffering with us, letting us do things, letting us do our own thing and go our own way, and, and he didn't have to do that. It would be well within God's right and well within God's means to, to do things differently, to not show that patience. He's a just God, but he's chosen to be patient. He's chosen to be patient. And I believe that that's why, that's why we're still here, you know, 2,000 odd years later, that's why the earth still remains. That's why we're still around. Um, elsewhere in the Bible, we read this. Um, it says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I think that is God's love in a nutshell. The very fact that we are still here is God patiently holding on, wanting to see more people come into his kingdom. That is the reason, that is the reason. So we learn this patience from the master. You know, it's something that we observe, the quality we observe in God and it's something I think, well, how do we do that? What do, what do we do in our own lives to, to sort of take that on board? Well, I think, first of all, we need to appreciate it. We need to almost take a moment and stand back from our, our lives and think, my goodness, God is a patient God. Thank you for your patience. And, and, and then I think it's a question of, you know, tuning into it day to day, um, asking God for a revelation of his patience. And then I think we have to somehow in recognizing God's patience, filter through our own experience how we are responding to other people. You know, there's that paragraph, a eh, eh, parable, parable in the Bible about the unforgiving servant. You know the one, it's, it's the, the guy he, and he, 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 owes, he owes millions of pounds to, to somebody else. I think it's even more than that. It's an unpayable sum of money and this master lets him away with it and he walks free, free of this burden of this unpayable debt. And then he's two minutes round the corner and there's a guy that owes him 50 quid and he's choking him by the neck, making him pay it back. And we don't want to be like that. We want to be people that flow out of an understanding of God's love, of God's patience for us. And then as we look at the people round about us and our families and our workplaces, we are um, supernaturally, I think, asking God that we would have that patience, that we would have that um, overflow of understanding of how he loves us, that we can bring into the, the circumstances that God has placed us in. You know, we've, we've inherited it. It's, it's part of the fruit of the Spirit, so it's something that is already within us, but it's just how we realize that, how we, how we encourage that out of ourselves. And I think a big part of that is looking at the Master, looking at God and thinking, God, you are good, you are patient, and I want to be more like that in the places you've put me in. So that's the first point, that we learn patience from the Master. The second point is this, that patience is learning to let go of control. Okay, that's one of, well, this is me, this is semi-autobiographical. It's, anyway, it's about, this is, this is how I often live my life, is that I want to be totally in control of things. I don't know if you're the same, right? Maybe you're not. There's not a lot of no heads nodding, so I'm thinking maybe, maybe I'm on my own here, but it, there's, there's something about me that I, I, and maybe you too, that you want to be in control of, of situations. You want to be in control of the outcomes and, and things that are happening. And part of that, if, if you're a dad or if you're in the workplace or whatever it is, there's a protective aspect of it. You want to do well. You want to see people doing well. You're trying to maybe shield people from, from harm or you don't want to get harmed yourself or hurt yourself. That's certainly something that I've found in, in my own motivations. But this, this, this sort of control can lead us to impatience. Now, impatience is, by definition, lack of patience. It's an intolerance 
or irritability with anything that impedes or delays us, okay? So like that guy that was flashing me in the fast lane, I was impeding him from where he was wanting to go on Monday morning. Maybe he was late for whatever it was. But I find myself like that, maybe because of this culture I've grown up in, that I like to just snap my fingers, get the answers to things right away. You know, that, that prayer or that situation that I'm, I'm waiting on, I don't have much patience for it being resolved. I'm like, come on, God, can you answer this prayer right now? You know, uh, this thing that I'd like sorted out in my life, can you just sort it out just tomorrow? In fact, yesterday, could you sort it out yesterday, please? Because it's, it's really annoying. Could you maneuver these things so that my life will work better? Quite often is a, is, is a subtext of prayers that I'm praying. And uh, quite often I find I get frustrated. I get impatient. And uh, I think the root of that is that quite often we forget who is running the show, don't we? Well, I do. You know, I I find that quite often God and me are working to two different timetables. You know, God's got his timetable, I've got my my timetable, and impatience comes when those timetables don't quite overlap in a way that I would like. And so part of patience for me is realising that life isn't just all about my agenda, our agenda, you know, there's, there's a bigger plan, there's a bigger picture, you know, that, that verse that we read in Ephesians says the words about being completely humble, it says be completely humble, and, and part of that is realizing who God is and who we are in the context of who God is, you know, we don't know everything that God knows, only God knows everything, you know, our knowledge of how the world works, of what's happening in people's lives is is incomplete, it's partial, you know. Um, the Bible tells us that his ways, God's ways, are above our ways. And, and it's like, I don't know if you do jigsaws, but, you know, we, there's a big giant jigsaw and, and, and we've got a small piece and we're working on our small piece, but God is, God is working on the full picture of everything and we can't, we can't see all of that. And through it all, I think God desires to form patience in us. And his motivation for that, his heart behind that, I believe, is that he wants us to rely more on him and not on ourselves. And that's a good thing, isn't it? To rely on God and not on us. And I think sometimes God is trying to slow us down, calm us down. You know, maybe we're not ready for whatever we're asking for. Have you ever thought about that? That Maybe we're not ready. Maybe the circumstances aren't right. Maybe we've still got lessons to learn. And and it, it took me back to thinking about the story of Joseph, you know, with his Technicolor dream coat and all that. Should have brought one in. And these amazing dreams that Joseph was given when he was a young lad. He got given these amazing dreams, you know, your brothers are going to bow down to you and they're going to do that. Now, um, I don't know if you've got younger brothers and sisters or if you are a younger brother or sister, you may have done what he does and he just goes, hey, I'm going to tell everybody that. And he goes and, he goes and tells his big brothers, hey, look, you guys are going to bow down to me one day and, and, and that's going to be awesome. Awesome for who? They might be asking. But he, the, the point of that is that Joseph wasn't quite ready to realise the, the, the dream that God had given him. There was a lot, if you read through his life, a lot had to happen. A lot had to happen in him. He had to develop character. He had to experience a lot in life. He had to experience a lot of the ups and downs of life. He had to learn to trust God. He had to humble himself and make himself part of God's plan. So sometimes it's a bit like that. Uh, St. Augustine says this, he says that one of the purposes of unanswered prayer is to force the expansion of our hearts. So actually what God is doing in patience and causing us to be patient is causing us to rely more on him, causing us to communicate more with him and hopefully come to him more. But it can seem hard in the day to day, you know, when, when the situation is all around you, when it's when things are tough, uh, I remember working for a company in 2011 and, and they, made, they, made a, they made a bunch of people redundant and I was moved to an office to basically run the project management for the whole office and I'd never done it before. And uh, you know, it, there was far too much work to do. People were stressed because there was redundancies happening. Uh, the day I started, it was my birthday. So, <laughs> so it, was, it was all that stuff was going on and the days were tough and each day was tough getting in the car and driving in was tough and 
it may sound spiritual, but I had no option in that situation than to try and some way turn to God and, and you know, listen to, listen to the Bible more. I find myself listening to the daily audio Bible in the morning and the drive on the way in and putting worship music on, listening to podcasts, stuff I hadn't really maybe done a lot of before. And, and I found that although the days were hard, that God was in them and he was getting me through. And, and during that time, I, you know, I was receiving a prophetic word that, that, that this would only be for a time and God was, God was going to do something. And I got that word in, I think, in 2013 in March, and I thought, here we go, this is it. And it was, a ye- it was over a year later, over a year later when, when that came to pass. There was still another year to go. So, but I look back on that time and I think I would never have chosen to put myself in that position. And many times I asked God to take me out of that position. But he, he said, no, that you, you, you stay here. You stay here. I want you to be here now. But I look back on that, and I think the things I learned in that time, the, it was like being down the spiritual gym every day, doing that thing. And, 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 and what that did uh, in being in that environment really, really prepared me for what was going to come next in my life. So I want to encourage you, if you're going through a tough time, and I don't know what you're going through, but don't underestimate what God can do in those tough moments if you lean on him. You know, don't underestimate it. So, we need to remind ourselves that God is on the throne and not us. And I, I'm pleased about that. I don't know if you, you, you see these te- television programs. Maybe you've done it yourself. I don't know if you've ever dared to do this if you're at work and the boss is out and you go and sit in his chair, you know, and see what it's like, how we spin around. Because the boss has usually got a really a comfier chair than everybody else. You have a wee seat. He's on his holidays and stuff like that, and you can go on a wee spin round in his chair. But then what if he comes back in and you're having a wee thing? What would you do? You'd be jumping off the chair and you'd be thinking, oh, really sorry about that. And I think sometimes we, we're like that. We want to be on the, on the chair, in the boss's chair. And, and God wants us to have authority and influence on in our lives, but ultimately he's on the throne. You know, he wants us to trust him. The, one of the lessons of, of the story of Adam and Eve, the account of Adam and Eve, is that they, they wanted to they wanted to be more like God. They wanted to be God's. The offer was there. They could, the, the ultimate like shortcut, you know, of, of they could have all this stuff without having to, to do anything. They could, all they needed to do was eat, eat from the tree of knowledge and they would have all this knowledge. And I think if they hadn't done that, well, how would they have got that knowledge? I wonder if they would have just got that knowledge by getting to know God, by walking through the garden with God, by learning to trust God, by having a relationship with God. But they took the apple, they took the shortcut, and they missed all that stuff out. You know, I sometimes wonder as well what it would be like if, if we, everything we asked for, we received instantly and on our own terms. It sounds great, doesn't it? I, I don't know, if you're a parent, uh, I suppose, would you? It would be like you giving your children everything they wanted all the time. I see some heads <laughs> shaking. They're just like, there's no way you would do that. Because as children growing up, Rightly, sometimes we ask for something, some stuff that isn't good for us. And God knows, God knows what's good for us. You know, sometimes I'm really glad that God hasn't answered a prayer that I prayed. Things have worked out differently and for the best. You know, perhaps God has a better outcome in mind. Perhaps the delay that you're in is because God has something better. But we do need to, during that, lean into him. We need to persist in prayer. And, and sometimes we'll get to see the outcome and, and there'll be times, I don't know, we might not get to, it may be when we get to eternity that we get to understand fully what God was doing in that situation. But through it all, we have to believe that in all things, in all things, God is working together for the good of those who love him. And we trust in that God. We trust in that God. Last point, last point. Patience is learning to appreciate the process. The process is one of these words that nobody really likes. So I tried to think of another way to phrase it. So if I was to phrase it another way, I think patience is about learning to enjoy the journey. Okay? It's about learning to enjoy the journey. Now back to parenting. I know there's a lot of parenting stuff in here, but I, the words that parents dread to hear on a journey is, are we nearly there yet? You know, you've usually gone out the drive and you're round the corner and you're on a 300-mile trip and, and by the time you've got to to lark all the questions, the questions being asked, are, you, are we nearly there yet? And I think we can be a bit like that in our walk with God. We can be guilty of having that kind of 
attitude. And it goes back to what I was saying before. We've got this kind of, I guess, the, the overwhelming culture that round about is, is it's sort of like a highlights package culture, isn't it? It's all short, uh, short clips, short video clips and uh, montages. Love a good montage, like a movie montage, like Rocky doing his training or Fast and Furious, them getting the cars all ready, or the A-Team, or whatever it is. And, and in, a, in a film or in a television program, you know, that sort of device is good because you don't want to be sitting for weeks at the cinema waiting until we actually did all these things. You need a fast-forward step. But in our own lives, our own lives, we don't have that. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, you know, we, we want the outcome, but actually, in, in the majority of cases, the outcome is the result of the process. I, I watched an episode, I don't know, it's on uh, Disney Plus. There's a, a wee four part thing, uh, sort of like Ed Sheeran, and it's sort of like they following him about with the camera and, and learning a bit more about him and how he works and how he's processed and stuff like that. And once upon a time, there was no Ed Sheeran. And then one day, Ed Sheeran was just everywhere. That's how, I, that's how I, he's, he was everywhere, right? And, and we can look at, look at that and think, well, Ed Sheeran was a bit of an overnight success. But you watch the programme about Ed Sheeran, and he spent years and years and hours and hours since he was a wee boy doing gigs. He would, he would do gigs every week, every night of the week, every time he could. If, if, if somebody, somebody was doing one gig a week, Ed Sheeran would be doing four gigs a week. If somebody was practising this much, Ed, you know, he was, he was putting the work in. So, and it seems to us that suddenly this guy just appeared and he was great and he was famous. But we don't see all the stuff, all the failures, all the hard work that went on behind the scenes. And, 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 and we can be like that with, with ourselves and, and with the things round about us. Uh, I've heard it said that God has two speeds, slowly and suddenly, slowly and suddenly. And it can seem like that. But I believe that those suddenly moments really come after a lot of the investment and time and walking and talking and praying and crying out to God. So if that's you today and you're waiting for something, I would just say, don't, don't give up. Keep going. You might not see it yet, but if God's promised something, he will deliver on that promise, on that promise. I met with a good friend of mine for breakfast the other day, and he told just a, such an encouraging story about his brother-in-law and his brother-in-law's wife coming to faith. And it all happened so quickly, you know, the, the, but, but it didn't because the family had been praying for the brother and his wife for years, for years, since he was a, a young boy right up to now. And we see this suddenly moment and we give thanks to God, but we, see, we don't see or we can forget about the, the prayers and the tears and everything else that went into that. So don't give up. Keep on leaning into God. Keep on persisting into God. You know, we'll watch the Wimbledon final this afternoon and these players, you know, they've worked hard at that. Or we see, we see an amazing piece of art, don't we? And all the work, all the time that's been spent on that. And the Bible tells us that we are God's handiwork. We are God's handiwork. In other translations, it says we are God's masterpiece. And I believe that we need to allow God, allow that, the master craftsman to work on us, to work in our lives. He knows the best version of me and the best version of of you. So why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we let him in? Why wouldn't we give him that space and that opportunity and that permission to work in our lives? And, and God's not in a rush with that. Of course, you know, we want to get, we want to be better than we are. We want to be, you know, we want to do things well, but God's a God of firm foundations. God's a God of deep roots. He wants to get into the, the nitty gritty. He wants us to go and seek him out he wants us to go and find the treasure that he has for us in his word and in that relationship with him. Uh, a good friend of mine pointed me to this verse in, in Proverbs. It says, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and uh, to search out a matter is the glory of kings. And it's this idea that, that if we pursue God, he has, he has treasure for us and in his word. It's like you know, the, the movie director that puts Easter eggs in a movie, not like physical Easter eggs like the chocolatey ones, but the wee things in a movie that, that really the fans of that genre, whether it's Star Wars or whatever it is, they will notice. And if you really look for them, they're there. And God really wants us to go after them. He wants us to slow down a little. He wants us to enjoy the journey. He wants us to learn, I believe, to wait on him. You know, sometimes we are, we're pushing ahead. We're pushing ahead. I think God wants us to wait on him 
You know, we're keen to make a decision. We're keen to see an outcome. But I think if we learn to wait on God, he will do something amazing in that process. You know, the verse in the Bible says, wait on the Lord, take heart, and wait on the Lord. And it's not just waiting on the Lord for things. I believe when we really nail this, we're waiting on the Lord just for who he is. We're saying, come Lord, show yourself. I want to know who you are. I want to wait and experience you for who you are, not for what you can give me. And I believe that's something where patience will really come in. So we've got three things we'll, we learn from the master. Patience is learning from the master. We look to God, we learn from him. We need to let go of control. If we're holding on too tightly, if we're trying to do things in our own strength, we need to appreciate, we need to remind ourselves that God is on the throne, that he is working things out for good. He's playing the long game for, for the best possible outcomes for everyone concerned. And we need to appreciate the process. We need to enjoy the journey you know, it's a life's work. God is wanting to work with us, and I believe we need to just let go and yield to him and say, God, have your way, have your way. And we can, we can be sure that God will do that if we give him permission. And one day, one day, everything will be resolved. Everything will be made new. That's what God promises. I am making all things new. And that will happen in God's good time and in accordance to his good purposes. Because in his name every promise is yes and amen.